Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a very interesting chest case. Now you're looking and thinking, that's not a chest. How could this be a chest case? You're going to find out in just a moment. Watch carefully. Fifty-four-year-old with seizures, new onset seizures. What's your diagnosis? It's very simple. It's not that simple, actually, but it's pretty simple. Lung cancer. Now, it's possible, yes, that it's a primary brain tumor. Primary brain tumors tend not to be so well marginated as this, uh, and they look more, nets usually look more like a round ball, cyst, something like that, more like a marble or something, a ball. And primary brain neoplasms are more commonly irregular and infiltrative, not 100%, but my point is this. When a person comes into the ER, you know, an adult, middle age, or, or actually, I'm afraid to say, uh, even in their 30s or 40s, but especially uh, later on, 50s and beyond, and they have a new onset of seizures, uh, and they do a head CT. There are a lot of reasons for seizures, but if you do a head CT, and you see a lesion like this. Actually, there are a couple of them there, aren't there? But they're right next to one another. See that? There's one, there's another. So I don't know if it's extending. It looks like they're probably two separate ones. Okay, and this is not an enhanced study. So the high attenuation material you see in the perimeter here, and then layering in the dependent aspect here, is blood. So anyway, someone comes into the ER, smoker or not, and if you see something like this, you need to think of lung cancer. So that's why this head CT is a good example of that particular thoracic diagnosis. Now we go to the now we go to the chest CT. And let's see if that pans out. Surely does. So here you see a large mass. Remember, one of the things I want to emphasize to you is the importance of being able to identify an abnormality. And it's as simple as there's an abnormality there. And then saying, OK, what anatomy is involved with the abnormality? The right upper lobe. Okay. And we can see that more clearly by using long windows here. And you can see here's the major fissure. So it's superior to that. So it's actually a posterior segment of the right upper lobe. And what is the nature of the abnormality? Is it, it could be any of a number of things. Fluid collection, mass, abnormal enhancement. Uh, vascular malformation, free air, there are all kinds of things you can see, calcification, blood, but here it's simply referred to as a mess. And while you're going to be learning a lot of differential diagnoses, that's not really what you need to memorize. In most cases, I'm asking you to memorize some of them, but that's to be comfortable with what your day-to-day -day experience of a radiologist is and to be able to relate to the issue of trying to remember differential diagnoses. But I think it's important that you are able to identify that there is an abnormality, describe the abnormality that is involved in reasonable detail, not lengthy, but in a way that the radiologist over the phone listening to you could generally picture what this looks like.
So in this case, I wouldn't just say that there is a mass in the reticle lobe. I'd say there is a large mass in the reticle lobe. Okay? And that alone tells you a great deal. Now, if you were to call the ER, if the radiologist were to call the ER and say, this patient, and you tell them, this patient has a large mass in the reticle lobe and two hemorrhagic lesions in the right frontal lobe, you really don't have to tell them anything else. It screams lung cancer. And then you can start going into other issues. The other issues which are important aren't critical in the immediate setting. Knowing that it's metastatic cancer to the brain virtually certainly will affect the surgical management of the patient if they're going to go in and resect it or not, or if they're going to do radiation therapy, which might depend on the tissue type of this tumor. But there are other things that are important, too, that will go into a more detailed report. So I would like you to be able to say, right off the bat, large right upper lobe mass with two hemorrhagic lesions in the right frontal lobe. That is succinct, clear, and the most difficult part, I know, from your standpoint, is keeping it that short is not going off into other areas and that's what I want you to learn is what really is the essence of what you need to talk about here. Beyond that, things I want you to be able to appreciate, first you should know that if there is extension of the tumor into the mediastinum, then that has a great deal of significance to the surgeon in terms of whether it's approachable. And if you look at this case, here you can see the right main stem bronchus. And you can see that, you can see this is vascular, but all of this part of the mass here, you can see how it's extending posterior to the right main stem bronchus right there. So there is, it looks like there is some mediastinal extension here. That's very important because this can't be resected. You could take all of this out, but you really can't go in and get that. So that may, in fact, even this over here on this side, it looks like you have, a, you have an NG tube in, but it looks like it may even be crossing the midline. So that's very important. Even the involvement of the hilum itself has a great deal of significance. And now look at this. Look at the right main stem bronchus. See that little convexity there? So it's pushing into and probably invading that right main stem bronchus. All of these little points have a great deal of significance in terms of the patient's, patient's prognosis and what therapy would likely be instituted, surgical, chemotherapy, radiation, or more than one of the above. So it's all important information and I want you to be able to appreciate the importance of those points. But once again, I think the critical aspect in your role as an RA is going to be say, be able to communicate this clearly to an ER doctor if your radiologist tells you what they see and then, or agrees with what you say, or if you're just trying to tell the radiologist on the phone, I think you should look at this because I believe there is this and this. Large right upper lobe mass with two lesions in the right frontal lobe. And then you can astutely add, this appears very likely to be the primary lung cancer with brain metastases. Okay, so what else can we get from this case? To identify whether there's, <clears throat> you want to know, know that if it's just in the right upper lobe or if it's in part of the middle lobe or lower lobe, so the sagittal images are very helpful for that. And I think you can see that here. They accent, you can accentuate the lung windows, and they can help you see the fissures. And of course, the fissures are going to define the lobes. And I'd say based on this, there doesn't look like there is any right middle lobe involvement. And it might seem surprising to you that a nasty, ugly tumor like that would respect those margins like this. But remember, the anatomy is completely different.
disconnected. So even though you just have this thin line, there's a potential space in there. If you had a pneumothorax, it would be filled with air. If you had pleural fluid, it would be filled with fluid. So we don't see much of a difference here, but it's a it's a big deal for that tumor to cross this potential space to go through the pleura and go into an adjacent lobe. Not that it can't, but that's difficult. Whereas going from the right upper lobe, as we saw, into the mediastinum is not traversing any such potential space, but tracking along existing anatomic planes. And then here, of course, we're on the left side, and you can see that this is the major fissure on the left, and you don't have a minor fissure on the left. Okay, so I think an important case of lung cancer, and I would further add that it's always important to look at the bone windows, especially, especially in a, in a lung cancer. Lung cancer just loves to go to bone. I don't see any bone lesions here, but always keep that in mind. Oops. Oh, look what I almost overlooked here. We could get all excited by that finding and be very concerned and communicate the finding to the ER. Oh my goodness. But we don't, the NG tube is malpositioned. It's in the distal thoracic esophagus and you need to alert them to that. That could be very significant for the patient, of course. All right, that's it for now. Hey, Max, come here. Just say hi to my friends. Up, up. There you go. There's my pal, Max. He's my coffee partner. He comes to Java Jive here and carry and has coffee or tea with me very often. Good boy. <laughs>